Streamers unmasked. Why streamers unmasked, everybody? Thank you for the follow, Flux. <laughs> Let's try this again. Streamers unmasked. Why streamers unmasked, everybody? Well, streaming on Twitch is very hard. Um, in my and many people's opinion, no matter what your motivations are or your background or why you got into it, it is very difficult to get out here every day. You go live and give a piece to yourself. And I think that a lot of the time it's often that people lose sight of that a little bit. They lose sight of how hard it is and how difficult it is. And that people, everybody who comes out and who streams is a real person with real lives and real feelings. And I wanted to do this podcast because I just wanted to get the message out. In a way, and I wanted people to understand a little bit more about the people who are entertaining them, a little bit more about the streamers who come out here, give it their all, and try to do their best to give you something, and sometimes don't always give it back. So without further ado, the streamer we have today, as you all know, is the wonderful Luckiest Cat. Um, welcome to the stream, Luckiest Cat. Do I say hi now? Yes, you do. I need to work on my intro better. It's my bad. Oh, there it is. There it is. There we are. Oh, my dabbing didn't come through. I was doing it well. <laughs> no, uh, the dabs were missed. Um, many of you guys should know the luckiest cat um, streamer here. Definitely comes in hanging out all the time on my stream. And she likes to play a whole bunch of multiplayer games and is just an awesome and lively person to hang out with, which is part of the reason why we're going to be doing some Among Us later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I throw a lurk up on, on Zill uh, quite a bit, and I'll like go in and out, and I'll redeem the sour candy bombs, and I'll see you make faces and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure people know who I am here. <laughs> At least a little bit. Most and also, I totally failed, and now I know why you were confused, because um, I said I was going to read a poem that I completely forgot to read. Would you guys like to hear the poem that inspired the name of the stream? <laughs> or the podcast? It is called um, We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. It reads, We wear the mask that grins and lies, it hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. The debt we pay to human guile, with torn and bleeding hearts we smile, and mouth with myriad subtleties, why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but, O oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but, O oh, the clay is vile, beneath our feet and along the smile. But let the world dream otherwise, we wear the mask. Um, That is just... Honestly, my interpretation of this was always that we go out into the world like we do as uh, as streamers and we wear the mask. We put our best fits forward and never let ourselves come out. And that's part of the reason why I want to do this podcast. And also I suck and should have done that earlier. <laughs> Sorry, Kat. It's okay. I, yeah, I didn't know the intro was happening, but listen, I'm doing what I'm told. All right. Yeah, I, I failed. I, I failed. Not you. Cat is doing wonderfully. Zell, on the other hand, you can cap him all you want. <laughs> So how are you doing today, Kat? I'm doing well. Um, I've had a really busy week, and I'm going to have a busy next next week, and I'll have a busy week after that, and then maybe, no, so for the next month, <laughs> I'm busy. I'm really busy this next month, as Zell knows, as we are trying to work out when to do this. I was like, yes, wait, no, I can't do that, so... We're we're winding down a little bit, and then the end of this week, I'm traveling. Uh, so, you know, I'm tired. I'm just tired. Doing anything fun on your travels? Yeah. Yeah. Um, gonna see my grandparents. Uh, everybody who's going has, um, will be like fully vaccinated, just about two weeks after a second vaccine, and um, everybody else has gotten it before I have, but um. Yeah, it'll be fun to see my grandparents and meeting up with them. We're going to go to a horse track, horse racing. 
that's awesome that's fun for me that's that's what we do in my family my dad used to be a cart jockey if anybody knows what that is i don't know if anybody has ever seen horse racing but sometimes they have carts and my dad used to do that when he was uh in high school college so yeah that's very interesting actually yeah that's what we're here for right little fun fun facts about me right yeah so um <laughs> did you bring your ice pick with you my ice pick yeah we got to get into the icebreakers oh <laughs> god damn it i fell into that <laughs> so bad oh uh, so bad <laughs> Sorry, I, I should i should just not i should not oh man you should let it go over my head Jeez, oh right? man so welcome to streamers on mass cat welcome everybody else so cat oh. mm -hmm. how did you get into that's the wrong question. I'm bad at this. How are you? Are you excited to be here? <laughs> Can my brain I work? I am excited. I feel like, Zell, I feel like we haven't chatted in a while. I feel like no. we used to chat, and then we both got busy. Yeah. We chatted. Things like 20-page um, papers for the final, your mm -hmm. class end up coming in, then your streams are starting to... Uh, oh, wait, that's me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in yeah. school, aren't you, Kat? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> I only have a... F I'm COVID has completely screwed up everything for my last few classes. So I only have a few left to my degree, but they're they're awful. They're like in-person labs and whatnot. And oh, so you had to wait for all of those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And it's only offered every fall. So I That's super sure. lame. So what are you going to school for then? So um, I am getting my bachelor's in physics with an uh, astrophysics and math minor so that's what i'm going to school for lots of science classes then yeah it's um it's fun i don't know it's fun for me it, science i don't know a bunch of physics classes it's different it's totally different like it, it's like all the fun part out of any science class like you took all the fun out of any science class you've ever taken and that's what all the physics classes are like so astrophysics what is that like then i think i've done physics before but definitely no astrophysics that's um uh what's the word astronomy there we go <laughs> it's just that type of stuff so uh well a lot of the Science Saturdays that I've been doing a few of them all like redo some of my uh, astro labs that I've done and that kind of walks through like oh we we took star pictures and we calculated the brightness of stars and you calculate um, distance and space and stuff and how stuff works in space and what type of universe we're in and how fast the universe is expanding and whether or not we're gonna go to like ABC because of ABC you know that type of stuff. A lot of, lot of theory stuff in astrophysics. A lot of theory stuff in astrophysics. But what type of universe are we in, then? I need to hear um, about this. <laughs> so there's, like, the big, the, the big freeze and the big crunch um, are, like, the two main running theories because we're either going to spread out and get really, really cold and we'll all, you know, die. Um, or we're just going to collapse because, you know, the gravity will either be too too much or too little <laughs> so yeah that's that's what i mean usually it's about um how when you talk about what type of theory the universe is it's about like how's it going to end basically <laughs> the moon was made of spare ribs would you eat it absolutely <laughs> Captain cold, jesse though. always with the powerful questions man. <laughs> do babies come from the moon cat they can, I guess, if you really want to go there. If they totally can. You can make Spe that happen. <laughs> Speaking of where things from, though, where are you from, Kat? Um, I'm from Iowa, United States. Smack dab. Like, almost smack dab in the middle of the country. The Midwest. So are you going to um, yeah. school around where you live? Or... Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing my undergrad at Iowa State University. Um, so, yeah. A lot of not a lot of corn, Serena. There's so much corn science around here. Like you know when you know when people talk about like the big bad pesticides company, they're based here. Like Monsanto. 
Yeah, Mons- yeah, Monsanto. Yeah, wow. yeah I know a couple. <laughs> yeah. Everything, all the time, is about corn here. All the time, it's real important, apparently. So if you could eat only one thing, then would it be nothing but corn, or do you have anything else you would be interested in eating? Do I have to pick like a single thing, or can it be like a dish? Oh, dish for sure, for sure. You know, like popcorn, cream of corn. Wait, does it have to be corn? No, it doesn't have to be corn. I'm talking with you. Uh, you know what? Believe it or not, I'm not a huge corn fan. I'm very particular because I we have I have so much fresh corn growing up my entire life. So like I can't do canned corn or like the bag frozen corn. I can't do it. It tastes disgusting to me. I can't. But um I would eat carbonara for the rest of my life. Delicious. <laughs> I would get I would gain three hundred pounds, but I would be happy and probably die of a heart attack. <laughs> three happy and die. Mm-hmm. That's how I would go out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like because of, you know, I grew up in Iowa and a lot of like our education is based around like, you know, when you live in a place that feeds the world <laughs> and you know, we do pigs and corn and soy, you know, those are everywhere and in, in everything uh, that like is like super like pounded into your education and so a lot of that sciencey stuff and what I'm interested in it has just come from I guess growing up here and wanting to like move into that genre and so like um seed science and like plant stuff is a huge thing huge thing so well, I think that's cool I think it's also cool that you said that you use your education and your streams and stuff I think that's got like that's something cool that I've definitely only seen you do like I don't know anybody else who has ever done a science stream so that's super cool yeah, I, there are, like, a lot of people, like, build stuff on stream. Like, there are, there are Astro streams, and, like, people, like, have, like, super expensive cameras, and they set up everything, and, but they don't really, like, talk about, like, how to, how to solve what you're doing or what exactly They're just like, ooh, look, stuff. it's a star. Yeah, which is kind of, like, the whole point of astronomy that's, that's like that's like 90 percent of it <laughs> what is your favorite uranium isotope cat is there i don't know is there 69 is there 69 <laughs> there doesn't have to be 69 we can just go with it four oh four. oh which one makes uh, 233? Zotope 233. Oh, man. Do you have any out- hobbies yeah. outside of Twitch? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in a lot of stuff. I, I do a lot of stuff. I do. I have my easel behind me. I've done a few art streams. I paint. Um, I mean, video games are my hobby, so <laughs> that's also a huge <laughs> hobby. Right now, um, oh, I'm a huge weeb. I'm a huge weeb. You guys know that, though. Most of you know that. I am, like, I'm a big weeb, all right? <laughs> um, it's it's pretty bad. My whole so is life. it safe to say that anime is your favorite kind of uh, movie or... Um... It's not my favorite genre of, like, movie. I like scary movies, but, like, TV watching-wise... Yeah, that's I what I meant. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's gonna be anime. I'm not a, I'm not a huge um, TV person besides anime. I think because like I was raised on it. So when I like I watched like Inuyasha and Kiki's Delivery Service, and I watched that. I didn't watch any other cartoons. And so when I see other cartoons like um, like Family Guy or something, I'm just not into it. There's Are you interested in uh, Studio Ghibli at all? Yeah, yeah, it's Kiki's Delivery Service. I mean, yeah, no, other than Kiki's delivery service. Yeah, I've, I've seen, I think, um, I think I've seen most of them, if not all of them. I've seen the, I think one that's hard to watch for me is um, Porco Rosco? Porco Rosso, yeah, that one's a little bit different as far as the comedy comes across in that one. My yeah, favorite I mean, is Howl's, but... Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I have, um, I have two... Pajama, I I love pajamas. 
So besides collecting pajama pants as well as one of my hobbies, um, I have two Studio Ghibli. I have a Kiki delivery service, and then I have uh, just a Totoro pajamas. What's your uh, favorite anime then? Oh gosh, I don't have a favorite. Anime. You can't have a favorite. <laughs> How about know. your favorite horror right. movie? Do you have one of those? Um. No, I don't think. No, I some. So I have a few that I really like. Right. So like uh, for anime, erased, erased, however you want to say it. Um, is a really good anime. That's something that I think like I'll come. It's newer, but something that I know I'll come back to. Like I'll watch it once a year. It's such a good anime. And then the VHS scary movies. There's like VHS and VHS two. They're a bit weird, but they're pretty good. They're pretty well done. Yeah. If you could only watch One Piece or Naruto, which one would you watch? You had to watch one of the two. You gotta pick one. You know, I'd probably do Naruto because they just have better better opening music, I think. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I think the opening music's better. One Piece is still going on, so you know, I don't want to die, you know, just before the ending comes out. I could just watch Naruto over and over again. I mean, technically, Boruto continues on after Naruto as far as that goes, but it, it is very different. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of music, then, what's your favorite kind of music? I listen to alternative music. I listen to alternative music and rap music. Like just normal alternative or like alternative rock? Like uh, both, like normal alternative. Like I also listen to pop punk and rock and, you know, just alternative music. That whole genre. Do you have a favorite band? Classic rock. Um... You know what? I have a Panic at the Disco tattoo. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, I like Mariana's Trench. They're a Canadian pop punk band. And uh, Ann Arbor is another one of my favorite bands. Those are all like pop punk, you know. The old Panic, new Panic, or both? Oh, I mean, so I got a Panic at the Disco tattoo because I've listened to them my whole whole life like my whole music discovery upbringing you know has been just like first album to new one when i started like listening when you're a kid you don't listen to your own music you listen to whatever your siblings or your parents listen to yeah but panic was one of like the first things that i like listened to on my own and you know stick with it (laughs) um i have five for life what is one thing in your life that you've done that you are extremely proud of, if anything? That I am extremely proud of? Ooh. Time, times are tough right now, Zell. What's something <laughs> I'm extremely proud of? I mean, it could be like, streaming. It could be finishing a book series. It could be literally anything. Yeah. Um, something that I feel like, like I'll tell, like an accomplishment you know, I've gotten, um, I've gotten my associate's degree. That's pretty cool. You know, that's a big step in the right direction that I'm heading. Um, a big accomplishment for me in my life, like something I always like fall back to, I guess, is when I was in middle school, we have a event here called Event Iowa and I, we won the middle school and high school division. And then they went to the state and we got, you know, we won money and a patent for our invention when I was in middle school. That's super that cool. cool. Yeah, it was, it was really dope. It was a car seat thing. Yeah. So what kind of a really car seat dope. thing? Um, we, it, just the design, the shape, and it like um, had like a stabilizer on it. So it kind of like rocked a little bit, but not too much to where it was unsafe. You know, we like did all the calculations for it and, had little speakers in it and you need to make sure the speakers didn't go too much so you could still like potentially listen to your music but have kid music in the back so or if you need to play like twinkle twinkle little star like old play music or whatever so yeah yeah i feel like i need one of these (laughs) yeah i mean i think i think um i remember like uh looking when my best friend got pregnant like looking at car seats and stuff and i think they had like a car seat that played music and i was like you know, so 
I'm like, that's my idea, but not really, because, you know, you got to, like, keep up with that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a process, yeah. And we were ten, so <laughs> somebody stole your idea. That's what happened. You won the patent so that they could make all this money off the car seat that's in the seat of my car right now. Yeah. So I don't. Uh, you don't have any kids, obviously. But <laughs> no. I have a cat. You know, I don't think I will. I don't think I'll have. Kids, I might adopt, but I don't think I'll ever have kids. I think adoption's I'm, an awesome option, though. I'm, I'm good. Maybe, <laughs> right? That's, that's. <laughs> I feel the same way. Don't worry. I have three of them, and I'm good. Like I am so good on kids right now. I'm good, right? That's not something I'm. I've ever really ever been interested in ever. Understandable. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that anybody should feel forced to have kids one way or another. Yeah. So, like, my favorite thing is. Uh, that statement, like, I tell people, like, I don't think I'm going to have kids. I think I'll be like, yeah. childless. Uh, that, like, that's, like, you know, people are, like, what's the most controversial thing you could talk about? And, like, for me, that's it. Like, every time I bring that up, someone has some sort of opinion on it of, like, oh, are you sure? You know? I mean, uh, you know, like, I feel like that's just one of those things. Like, I don't, I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but everybody has an opinion that they feel the need to push on you kind of like in a way like just if you don't want to have kids you shouldn't feel the need to have kids and people should be understanding and then i think a lot of the time people don't want to ask you why like you know what i mean like oh you don't want to have kids well, what's wrong with you maybe i just don't want to have kids i know plenty of people a who lot. are like that that's why <laughs> that's a lot wrong. so how is uh Considering the pandemic still going on, how has that affected your life? You said you're going to be getting your second shot so you can go see your grandma soon. That's pretty awesome. I've gotten it already. I've gotten it already. I actually got super sick on Thursday from it, and I'm, I feel like I'm still, like, I was dragging along Friday. Which one did you get? Did you get the Pfizer or the other one? I got Pfizer, yeah. Is it hard? Sir? Yeah. You know, I've had a lot of medical uh, issues in my life and I'm young so I would go to the doctors and they basically would be like no and turn me away they, like, they wouldn't even have any sort of conversation with me about anything because some of the stuff I'm dealing with I get blood clots um, and so I'm still working on that and basically like every doctor ever has just been like shoo you know they won't talk to me about anything yeah, and no. I went to my one um, uh, gynecologist uh, like, I don't want kids, you know, talking about, like, how much does it cost to, you know, get those removed and stuff, and they they wouldn't even talk to me about it. So, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, we'll talk about it next time, and then they, yeah. You know. And then you get there, and they're like, oh, we'll talk about it next time, you know. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm scared to get my second dose on Friday. Yeah, it was rough. I mean, it says, like, if you haven't, I don't know. It's, you know. It's not, yeah, there's there's all sorts bad. of different things to take into account. Don't drink a bottle of wine. That's what I would recommend. That's what I did. Not fun the next day. Not fun at all. I got my Pfizer in my arm and my bottle in my mouth. Yo, she... I, we talked about this. She stabbed me. She you said she was aggressive. Swear, aggressive was I the word that you use. All I have is my lip gloss. I swear she held it like this and went like this. Um, I bled. I had blood drip down my arm after what? she stabbed me. It's not. That's not normal, cat. I've been through a lot of shots in my life, especially having kids. They get shots of their own, and I have never seen that. Never, I've never like she like she did it. I'm like that was kind of hard, and then she pulled it out, and like there's blood dripping down my. Arm. Never gotten, I've never gotten shanked by a medical I've never gotten professional. shanked by a medical professional before. I've never, like, it was, I like, you know, like, when you get stat, like, your you know, doctor rips off your bandage, you're like, could have been a little more gentle, but I was, like, <laughs> taking out all of her aggression. She's been there since 7.30 in the morning and oh, just no. stabbed me. Yeah, and then Alex got his the same day. We were right next to each other, and I'm looking at his nurse, and he, she's like, oh, baby, oh, it's okay. You'll be all right. And she's, like, checking its temperature and making sure he's safe and warm. And my nurse was like, hey, stab, go. Oh, man. 
Well, talking about more pleasant I, things, do you enjoy video games, Kat? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed video games my whole life. That would be probably one of the reasons why, like, the reason why I started streaming, you know. It's the exact same reason why I started streaming was because I like games so much. Well, okay, not yeah. exact same reason. Not... So, I think there's, like, two types of streamers, we'll say, broadly. And one is, like, I like talking to people, and I like games, so I'll stream. The other is, I like games, and I can talk to people, so I'll stream. I mean, the, the way I look at it is the streamers are people who saw something in streaming that they wanted, whether it's a career or to be able to play their video games in there, and there's people who were interested in, like, the social interactions and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I know a lot of yeah. people who got into streaming that are like, well, either my friends were doing it or, you know, it's COVID. It's COVID and human interaction is down and I really want to get out and talk to people and meet nice people. And I think luckily, as far as Twitch goes, for the most part, I don't know what your experience has been, but for the most part, I've met mostly nice people. So, yeah, I think um, I think you could probably relate to it a little bit like when you're like kind of starting off streaming and you want to grow and you're potentially in a community or you like are with someone who's also a streamer that isn't really helping you grow or maybe potentially holding you back or doing something that's not really helpful at all. And so you kind of have to like step away from that person, you know, kind of be like, all right, like congrats. I'm going to, I can't, you know, got to separate. I'm going to work on my own thing. Um, I think people yeah. lose track of the fact that everybody else has things going on and different experiences and stuff and like i've definitely had some of that like where i'll be a part of a community and then sometimes it's even just like somebody was drunk one day and they said something to me that i was like that's really awful um never mind i'll see you later yeah it's just it depends like i definitely when i was like, starting out streaming i feel like so i tried to stream three four years ago and i was just basically streaming with my friends i didn't even think about like being a streamer it was streaming so my friends could watch and then um then i met some people i was playing overwatch with and they all streamed and i was like you know what i'll try it and i kind of like got dipped into their community and i felt like some of those people like didn't want anything to do with me they were like hyping me up but only if i ever showed up to their streams and stuff like that um you know, you know, it was a it was a weird interaction. I ended up like stepping away and, you know, meeting with you, <laughs> and it kind of just like really, um, I felt like really growing just like as a Twitch streamer. Like I feel like I'm slowly developing, you know, my little my little kitty cat lucky my luckiest cat crew, you know, because you know I ended up growing and you know meeting Zell and all the people through this community and whatnot i don't know does that make sense am i rambling too much everybody everybody in my um oh i can't hear Zell anymore <clears throat> oh i muted my microphone which is probably good because i interrupted you and then <laughs> well that's fine well i mean if it was important it was. I was just yeah. saying, and then you, then you were thinking you met Zell, and you met, you found out what a real asshole on Twitch looks like. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't even like people were mean. It was just, um, it's just about like, kind of being like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a streamer. I gotta like do stuff, you know. And Sometimes like, you just get in some place in like, way higher than cats. It probably is higher than cats because mine is through this. I can turn it down a little bit more. There, that might be, yeah. yeah, that's better. Um, so sometimes it's just like the vibes a little bit wrong, one way or another, and not necessarily in a bad way. Ooh, just like I was thinking about that earlier. I'm like, am I okay to be like? Sometimes you just hang out with a group of friends on Twitch, and the vibe is wrong, and you get to tell those people like, sorry, the vibes are off. Vibe check failed. I gotta go. Yeah, I, gotta I think go. sometimes people really, I don't know. I don't know. I'm the, you know what? I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. There's just this very specific instance that I'm not going to get into right now. But it was like, I felt like somebody should probably separate their um 
what they had going on with their friends from um their streams and stuff. I know when my friends come in here, it's like a crapshoot whether they're going to be like, hey, and then do a dickheaded stuff or whether they're going to be like the buddy who's just supportive and they're like, oh, rah, rah, go Zell. Yeah, I think um, I have some, like I posted on my Facebook, you know, like, hey, I'm starting out streaming. You guys could help me reach number of followers, whatever. And I had people go in yeah. who had Twitch. And, um, and then I had some people who were like, what do you stream? <laughs> are you good? You know, are you good at video games? <laughs> yeah, I like, just started. I'm the best on the platform, B. Like, I know. It's like, and like all the people who already knew, and this is because, you know, I, I played Overwatch quite a bit. I don't anymore. Uh, they're all, you know, knew that I would probably be streaming Overwatch and stuff like that and kind of, you know, followed me through that. Yeah, and my brother like comes and he'll just like lurk my brother will just give me a lurk he is he is, he works third shift so he'll just like throw me up and just not talk at all and then he'll text me he won't he won't talk in my chat he'll text me i wish my brother would uh, come in and lurk sometimes he actually was the only person who said that they thought the podcast was a bad idea i was like hey how's everybody feeling about this and he was just like i was like oh okay buddy thanks a lot man <laughs> thanks a lot yeah, I think whenever, well, so I think of Zell. I think if you're someone who really likes to talk to people and like if that's like your thing, it helps, you know, like if you really like games and or if you really want to talk to your community and build on that, like a just chatting stream and maybe like changing up a little bit, like what you're doing right now is perfect. I think it goes really well with who you are and what you're trying to do. I think a lot of people would tell me that I talk too damn much. Like at work, they're just like, dude, just, just so you chill. Can- just shut up. Can we bring that here? <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that too sometimes. That's why we stream, right? I can talk to myself. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of video games, then you mentioned you've been playing games since you were young. What is your first video game memory? Like, what was the first game that you just fell in love with? So I have to look it up. I can never remember what it's called. Well, okay. Let's play the there's, describing there's... game before we look it up. So, I don't know, right? Because they all mush. They all mush yeah, together. Yeah. They all mush together. But one of, like, when I, I really liked playing video games, I remember, is for, I think, the PlayStation. It might have been PlayStation 2. Um, You had these neon orange little gun attachments and you would shoot vampires and you were vampire hunters and you were cocking your guns and shooting them it was like um it reminded me so much of a it's like an arcade game that you would like see at arcades or movie theaters that was amazing i loved it so much (laughs) and like um i mean i i feel like i can't remember what it's called i'm not gonna be able to get it i'm gonna be like vampire game with crappy orange guns PlayStation. Maybe it'll pop up. Maybe it'll pop Vampire up. Vampire Knight? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's probably it. That's probably it. And then um something that I also remember playing a ton was um Barbie's like Garden Kelly's Adventure Grom Disc computer game. I'm just gonna pretend then... like I don't know what that game is. No idea what that game is. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the LOL surprise game cat? The LOLs? No. no. So LOLs are like this um new surprise toy. Like with kids these days, it's all about surprise toys, whether it's Ryan's mm-hmm. or whatever, whatever. They, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the store all over the place, but there's a game on the Switch. It is awful. It is probably the worst video game I've ever seen, and my daughter has it. She loves it. She'll just turn it on. She'll sing to it. Was that you? It's like singing Ooh. to the Barbie thing song, just like, mm, I'm the Maybe. kid. I'm the kid. Like, there was, like, stuff you could do. Um, also, like, the we had an Animaniacs game. I remember great. that game. I, that game was awesome. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, that was, I mean, I it just, I knew it was going to be a problem. My parents knew it was going to be a problem because I was just obsessed. There goes my sleep schedule as a small child. Gone. Playing so what was your first console, then? Was it the PlayStation? Um... Uh, probably. I think, um, I played, so I I remember playing Wind Waker on the GameCube when I was little as well, but that was my, 
uncles that he gave to us. So I think that we had a PlayStation um, before we ever like got a GameCube, which I know is like a little weird, but I mean, I think the PlayStation uh, actually came out before the GameCube, so that actually does. Did it? It was okay. like PlayStation, GameCube, PlayStation Two, OG Xbox, yeah. and then like you know the Wii somewhere in there. We're talking about all the consoles, though. Are are you a Xbox, PlayStation, PC Master Race? Where do you land on that? Well, let's. So my my parents are divorced. So when I talk about my dad, I usually talk about my stepdad. Um, when I say like my dad, that's who I'm referring to. So at my birth father's house, we had PlayStation. At my mom's house, we had an Xbox. Oh, the best of both worlds, I see. I know, I know. I think I like the Xbox better. And like for a while, I feel like I, I do feel like Xbox was clearly better. Like for uh, a, I just a had the hardest time, time not muting you there while you started talking about <laughs> Xbox. No, no. I actually think during then, like the 360 time, I think yeah, is when the Xbox yeah, yeah. was really shining. And then and then now they're like kind of you know even right. I think it depends on what you want. I definitely go with PlayStation Five over like literally. I don't think it's a competition, but it's because oh, of the yeah. catalog of yeah, games. Yeah. Like you got the Demon mm-hmm. Souls, the next Final Fantasy, um, the new yeah, I, Spider-Man game. I didn't get into PC games until I have, I guess, like a a childhood friend. I've known this guy for over ten years, just you know, around ten years ish. Um who's into computers and it's my friend my friend josh j-a-w-s-h josh is a strong challenge he's in my he's in my discord i think as like josh and um he's just into computers and so i slowly kind of got into pc master race from my friend and yeah i kind of i kind of started getting more into the like laptop actually currently the the laptop i use i had a buddy when i was driving a truck it was like, you should really play PC games. And I was just like, I had the oldest laptop you've ever seen that I was bringing for school. And I'm like, this ain't, this isn't going to do it. And then I bought a really expensive, like $2,500 laptop. And that's actually what I still use. I bought it like five years ago. It's still, still kicking. Still doing this yeah. podcast right now. I didn't get a PC till last year. Like two, has it been two years? Am I no no? Uh, it was like five hundred bucks. It runs pretty great. It's huge. If I could pick it up right now, it's it's huge. It is heavy. It's is she big? She thick? I think with a uh, with a PC compared to the laptop though, like because you're not worried about portability, you can get like more. Like for that seven hundred dollars you said, you can get like for a seven hundred dollar desktop, right? You you have to pay like twice as much at least on a laptop. So I think that's probably the best way to oh, go at this definitely. point if you don't need to move it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely what's both of y'all's favorite genre of what emmy oh you know what i did wrong i get it okay this is my fault actually ha 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 a video games i assume both of our favorite genre of video games here let's do this I didn't do that Okay, never mind. I did it the right way. I thought I didn't um increase the maximum number of allowances for the questions. Emmy's just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy's just like, I see the channel point redemption, but you know what? I, I have a finger that'll show you how I feel about this. Um, it's shooters, isn't it? You're going to tell me shooters. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I am. I'm thinking about whether or not shooters are my favorite game. I think for me, so I used to just, so I was super into YouTube as well, right? And then I would just watch people play games because I'm poor, right? Um, I just watch people play games. And um, for for me, for the longest time, like these super cool story games are something that I really like watching, but I didn't, I never got the chance to play them um right you know and i think when i go to like what am i gonna play i usually play shooters yeah i i really like capcom games does that count as a genre does the capcom game like i don't know like, because i feel like nintendo is kind of like a genre in and of its own because you know you yeah. say nintendo and it means 
So I guess it I guess it kind of does because you know Capcom are very specific kind of games. Kind of like Nintendo, like you know, it's Mario, it's Zelda. Yeah. Game scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I really like Capcom games. If you're going to be like what game would you play? Play the Double May Cry series like over and over and over again. Oh man. That's that's one of the best video games. That I don't think they do, George. I don't think anybody notices the Channel Point Redemptions. Do you think people notice the Channel Point Redemptions, Kat? Um, well, I just pay attention to Emmy in chat. So, I mean, it's <laughs> No, I know. You're, do- you're doing the, the classic streamer thing of actually reading chat and then responding, which is perfect. Yeah, I usually bring up chat on my phone, and I have a little charging stand that I'll set it on. I'll put it right in front of me so i don't miss it when they i play the those. double laptop game because i have my big laptop i was just talking about and i have the small laptop that's just right here to the side that i pull up my stuff at full full screen yeah no because if i if i have it to the side i it just everything here just nope mm-mm, can't i don't pay enough attention to it but i'll see it like i'll scroll through my phone there's a little lag on it but but for real this whole podcast is his best cheese cheddar sharp cheddar She's not allowed to answer. Like if it's not Cheddar, she can't talk. Nobody can hear you right now. It's Cheddar. It's Cheddar. She agreed with me. Never mind. She can talk again. It's cheddar. No, what's your favorite kind of cheese for real, though? You're going to choose Cheddar out of all the cheese ever to exist. That's it's just Cheddar cheese. Tell me like it's like blue yeah. cheese or something. That's your favorite. Ooh, I, don't like, I don't like blue cheese. Um... I like Gouda cheese. We'll say best cheese, Gouda cheese. There you go. I just wanted to say smoked Gouda cheese, aged smoked Gouda cheese. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. you know, it it hits different. It hits different. I get Jesse, that. Jesse, were you not here earlier? Babies come from the moon. Yeah, Jesse, where you at, man? Babies come from the moon. Clearly, it's great. Also, I mean, my favorite genre is probably like Souls like. If we're counting Capcom as a genre, we're definitely counting Souls like. I am a difficulty um person. It's mozzarella. Mozzarella. Sparrows come from and babies. We we talked about this and babies. Where do you think all the ribs are used? All the spare ribs. How do you think they get used up to put in the babies? Bear ribs come from the moon. Babies come from the craters on the moon. They just they hatch out. They hatch out. Of the moon. Yeah. Perfect. So, are you more of a multiplayer person or a single player person? I I mean, pretty sure I know the answer, but it doesn't matter for me because, like, I think it just depends on the mood. I've really been in a multiplayer mood recently with my streams. I've been doing a lot of Dead by Daylight, and that's mostly because I'm in love with Serena. So, uh, that would be why. But I've also just, like, met a lot of people to play games with, and that's really fun, <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean, see, that's one of the things about Twitch that's super awesome, that you can meet people and then play games, especially when you can't go outside right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you yeah, competitive so like, in video um, games? It depends. It depends. It depends. I think a little bit. I would say. Okay, so like, are you more competitive with Alex than other people, or other people than Alex? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have uh, to beat your I... boyfriend at video games? <laughs> Alex, am I better than you at video games? It just depends. What multiplayer? You know what multi? I hate Why is it dead by daily? It's actually Overwatch. I wish they would fix it so I can play it and not be angry. Because, like, uh, it's they have a very poor poor ranking system that just doesn't do anything. And they're like, I feel like a lot of multiplayer games do that, where the rank, like, (laughs) you're either playing with people that are awful or people who are way better than you, and you're just sitting there, like, in either situation, like, when you're beating on somebody who's worse than you, it doesn't feel good. And it doesn't feel like, good if somebody just sh- shoots you from across the map and you don't know where it came from because you have no idea what's going on compared to that person. I mean, that would yeah. be every game of Overwatch for me. I would just be dead. You guys would be like, where are you at? I'd be like, I died. I don't even know how. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm pretty competitive in gaming. Uh, like, I got pretty... I think, again, I said, like, I'm really obsessive. Like, I like a game and I 
play the heck out of it until, you know, I, I die down a little bit. Um, and we've been playing, um, Dead by Day. I've been playing Dead by Daylight with Jesse and Serena, um, and Alex. I think, you know, we've been doing like a couple's night with the four of us. And I'm, I rank up quite a bit, quite a bit. I'm, I'm up there now. And I, I feel like when I see it and I'm like, is this bad? <laughs> like, is this bad? <laughs> <laughs> Should I be level 35 right now? Or is that too soon? Did I just start? Yeah. I don't know how the ranking works in that, but don't you get like more perks and stuff as you rank up or something in the game that makes it more interesting? Yeah. You um yeah you get better perks so. Um, are you a uh, gaming completionist or do you play games for more of a quickie? Oh my gosh! So I I thought I thought that I had like a little bit of completionist in me. It is nothing compared to Alex. It is nothing compared to how Alex plays video games. So, uh, like right now, um, on Saturdays, I've been streaming Pokemon. And so, um, I'm with Pokemon, you can do this. You can be like, I'm going to run through all of it and then I'll get all the Pokemon. I'll fill up my Pokemon. I'll beat all the gyms and I'll go back through it. And I like doing stuff like that because, like, games like that, because I can just kind of like work at my own pace to complete it. Like, if I, if I beat all the gyms of Pokemon, I, I can wait and maybe go back to it later to 100%. Yeah, and then you still have all the progress that you worked up to until then. Mm-hmm. And it's Pokemon, so it's not like. Yeah, it just depends on the game. Like, I was, when I did Cave Story and I found out that, like, I didn't get the, like, super true 100% good ending, I was like, I won't play this game again. Like I talked to this person <laughs> so many times. I had to talk to him four more times. Are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> four more. Th- not happening <laughs> at all. No. Right. What is your biggest accomplishment in gaming then? Of all the things you've done, completed in video games, what you would say you are like the most thrilled about? I guess might be what how I'd word it. I'm I'm bad. You're bad. Um. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> I I mean, recently I can say that like I've ranked up really nice in Dead by Daylight. I mean, yeah. I feel like that's an accomplishment, isn't it? Yeah. Um. You know, before the ranking system really got gucked up in Overwatch, I was up there, but now I feel like I can't get anywhere in Overwatch with ranks. Um. Is there another game I'm good at that we play? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, my my gaming accomplishment is that I feel like I'm actually gaming right now. I went from, you know, watching people play games to actually being able to, like, play games and, like, sit down and enjoy them. That's, like, I guess that's my... Actually, a really good accomplishment, though, especially if you (laughs) weren't weren't playing certain kinds of games before. Yeah, I feel like I've definitely gone out of my comfort zone and although epic lost a ton of money on it they were doing those free games and i've, and I've definitely just like snatched a lot of those free games and tried them out and oh there were some them. really good ones especially for that yeah. christmas area yeah, what is so your so main so character bad. in lego star wars very important um and why is it chewbacca <laughs> She's like, what characters are in the game? <laughs> they don't even show, like, there it is. There's so many. There's so many. And I honestly, I want to No, there's like a couple hundred, troll. aren't there? It's fun to troll around and be uh, R2-D2. Like, that's the funnest is to just because you can't do too much you can like yeah, you stun. like open doors and stuff and then you just like yeah, you can like stun people these are the real questions i usually play um people who shoot the guns i like a lot like when alex and i were playing um i think they're safer to play than the like lightsaber people because often when you're playing the lightsaber people because we're getting totally into the lore of lego star Wars now when you play the lightsaber people, like, people will shoot you from across the map, and you're just like, no! But when you play the gun person, you can be the person shooting them, like, pew, 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 before you even come up to them. There's so many. This is, this is like a ranking system. 
Where's R2D2? Indie kids, that's what R2D2 is ranked as. What's the ranking system if Indie Kids is one of the ranks? Hip hop, classical, <laughs> drum and bass, jazz, folk. So the folk. least arbitrary ranking system I've ever heard of. What music genre do you listen to based on your main in Lego Star Wars? <laughs> God, there's so many of them. What? That is, that is honestly kind of amazing. I never would have put a Lego Star Wars character into music genres. Oh. This one's great. Sorry. I have to actually... Can I copy and paste it in the Discord instead of actually... Yeah. Saving it to my... Is it in memes? I'll do it in memes. <laughs> Um, oh man oh man that's so funny oh that's so cool uh, uh, that's here maker as long as they shoot um they're good they're good enough for me that is way more in depth than i've ever gotten to lego star wars oh my goodness so if you could make any video game what would it be like? And this question comes from Agent Spatially, actually. He asked it, and I was like, I'm stealing that. So, what video games? You know, I would. What would it be like a Capcom game? I love Bayonetta. Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta 5, the, <laughs> Bayonetta 1 through 10. <laughs> it would be all the bayonettas ever. That it's a good game. I feel like it has enough story and enough action and enough eight foot tall women in it to make everybody happy. I think that's something I liked about God of War was it was a nice mix of action and story, and I never felt like I, yeah, I've never played good. Bayonetta. It's kind of on my radar along with like Near. Yeah, God of War is a good one too. It's like a. That's I feel like it's something that's so hard to do cuz like you have games that are like um Terraria, right? And then you you have the shoot games and then the shoot games are weird because the characters have backstories but the backstories don't matter. <laughs> it's so true though. Shoot games and MMOs, they all have like really epic backstories that have nothing to do with the game. Yeah, they're like okay, why are they here? If you're going to give me that much detail. It doesn't matter. But people want backstories sometimes, right? So I get it, you know. And I think that like the Devil May Cry series, God of War, um, Hades does a good job, you know, of, of throwing the... Um... I think Hades does a good job to a point and then after, for me, I, I think it, yeah. they do a really great job of action and story. And then I feel like the story in a lot of ways have just gone... I mean, maybe... It's probably just me. It's probably just me. I feel like the well, story just never ends in that game. Yeah, you play Hades a certain type of way. It's not like a... It, it's not like a start... What are you game. saying, Kat? What type of way am I playing Hades? No, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm saying, like, it's a type of... You play it a certain way. Like, it's... I want to play... I want to get quick. I want to get hot. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, Whereas yeah, a lot of other people could just play through it and just play and get the story and that's what they're more interested in which is what's really yeah. good about that game though is that you can get so many different experiences out of just one game yeah so like i i like like the the thief games those are good um those are good games is it, alex will have to tell me is that the one where you can make rats kill people right or is that the other one that's dishonored i like dishonored as well oh, i get i get those two mixed up yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I I, uh, I definitely think of Dishonored and Thief as the same game. Yeah, they're super similar. They're great games. They're they're like story, like more story Assassin Creed type games, right? That's how they feel to me, at least. So I I think like that's that's what I'd want to make. I would want to make a um really good like story game that doesn't make. There was one. I think it's I think it's called Plague, where like. Like, I watched someone play that, though. That game was whack, but I could not stop watching the person play it, you know? 
<laughs> it's so bad it's good. No, it wasn't bad. It was like, oh my god, what's happening? This is crazy. And there wasn't like a lot of action. It was like a lot of hiding and rescuing and stuff like that. Oh, I think I'm thinking of a different play game then. There's like one on mobile that uh the whole point of the game, it might be called Play Gank. You have to kill all of humanity, you know, classic game trope. Oh, We're just killing one. all of humanity. Yeah. I don't remember what the what the game is called to save my life. But it was a it was a while ago. Like it, it reminded me of like the Dishonored and Thief games, right? Those are good games actually. They're, those remind me of Capcom games too. So you know, whatever that genre. I'm biased. I mean, you're allowed to be biased in video games. I think that's one of the most fun things about video games is that there's a game for everybody at this point. Oh yeah, like um, have you seen the meme that's like, no, Animal Crossing isn't re- a real game. The copy pasta. Have you seen that copy pasta that it's? Like, I do not believe I have, but I also know that my mom plays video games, so it's there's like, a video game for everyone. It's like, uh, Pokemon and Animal Crossing aren't real games. You're a real game where you can dump three thousand hours into any game easy, right? Oh like, yeah, that's. And that's I mean, totally not what video games are about. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. There's so many different experiences, whether it's an RPG or a shooter, an action game, roguelike, anything in between. Among Us and Fall Guys are like their own little things over off in the side. What do you. What's your mom play? Candy Crush and shit that looks like Candy Crush. Oh. <laughs> My mom got obsessed with Pokemon Go. Oh, really? Did she used to Pokemon Go places? Mm-hmm. She Pokemon Go to the polls. I don't know if anybody else <laughs> was anybody. I don't know if anybody gets that reference. Pokemon Go to the polls. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a. <laughs> that happened. <sighs> yeah, it sure did. I I love the um. Poor Pokemon Go. Like, they had a good thing <laughs> running, and it was like, go outside. And then they're like, don't go outside anymore. <laughs> don't. Go outside, don't just don't run off cliffs. Well, it was because, you know, there's a pandemic. Yeah, they, like, I, no, obviously. Like, I, I've seen them do stuff that is like, well, now you can attract Pokemon to your house. And if you log in on this time of the day, and I'm like, they, they're really still trying out here, aren't they? If you could have any superpower cat. What would it be and why? Um, to freeze time so I can take naps. I, I'm never well rested at all. Oh my I, god, that's so it's a like, good way to t- you freeze time. I feel like I could sleep for five hours a day, like nap, like nap, and then I'd be able to be like, oh, it's still noon. That's amazing. I didn't even think about that. Like, you could do so many things with freezing time, and like you could get so many places, but also just taking naps. Like imagine if you you could just be going twenty four seven, just napping on your free- time freezes. Like that'd be awesome. Like I think I think just I don't feel well rested at all, uh, mostly ever, but especially since the pandemic hit. I think everybody's like sleep schedules are terrible. I feel like part of adulting in general is just never feeling like you slept for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like the moment you get serious about all this adult shit, whether it's kids or a job or school or anything like that, it's just like mm-hmm. I, never like, feels like you sleep. It's like freeze time to rob a bank. Like you could do that, but really, it probably, you should just take a nap. It would probably be so much just easier. Take- just so much easier. You could get money in other ways if you were freezing time with without robbing banks anyway. Yeah. That's, that's true. I mean, robbing banks would probably help, but... You could just be do pool tricks. Just be like, hey, I'll play you for $1,500. And then you shoot, and then the moment it hits, freeze time, and then just move all the balls into the pockets, and then be like, I don't know what happened. They teleported. I win. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just whack. Yeah, that's that's what my superpower would be. I've thought about it and like I was like, oh, what if I picked in D and D for like my like power? But I think freezing time would be nice. That'd be my go-to. How long have you been yeah. streaming for, Cat? I guess you um, could say because you said that you streamed a couple of years ago. But how long yeah. have you been? I what do you want to call it? Serious or I guess maybe in this run? 
They know you got affiliated this time around, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, since last fall, I think. I don't think it's been a year yet. Because, uh, maybe. Since I got my, I literally, I got my PC and it was like, I'm going to stream Overwatch, right? So, like, that's what I, that was for. So, whatever I bought my PC, it's been that. So, um, I think, it, I think since the fall yeah last fall and i know you covered this a little bit but what got you into streaming like what yeah. things what people got you into streaming so, um I, I used to be all about youtube and i'd watch people play video games on youtube and twitch was so i was into Yu Gi Oh, and like sometimes they do card stuff on twitch and that's really only what i watched on twitch and then gaming I don't know, kind of like took off on Twitch, like being a streamer kind of like was a thing. And I would watch that. And then just like knowing someone that I played games with who was like, let's stream, you should stream, you know, just kind of really, that's what did it. Um, so it's just what started it all was someone saying like, oh, hey, like, it'd be super cool if you also streamed, like you would, you know. That's what, that's what did it just so, so is it safe to say that you enjoy it. streaming then i do i do yeah um are you into stream just for fun or are you kind of maybe one day a job or a mixed bag of the two um i think everybody should um stream for fun a little bit i think when you know I was like, oh man, maybe I can get super serious about Twitch and was really trying to grind and then my views weren't doing great. It really like hurt your mental. It, it really it really sucked more than I felt like it should, you know. <laughs> I <laughs> and, I you, believe you know, me, I know. <laughs> and so there's there's a there's a fine line of of course, you know, everybody I think is here like it would be great if it if this is what I could do because I love doing it and to breach out and you know, just, you know, if I could stream every day of the week. And I think what the other day you're like, if I had a four hour, you know, if my work day was eight hours for a prep for a stream, like that'd be great. That'd be, that'd be awesome. But um, I think, I think I'd probably, I probably still would want to do something else. I like too much stuff. I have too many hobbies. And I like going outside too much to just stream as a job. Like it's a part-time job. That's probably would be like my my ideal goal for this for streaming. That'd be cool. So, what are your um, short-term goals and your long-term goals for streaming? And it doesn't just have to be numbers either. It could be like maybe there's something you really want to do. Like one of my goals was the podcast. Yeah, so we've talked about this a little bit. So I started doing Science Saturday streams once I hit affiliate, and I I feel like I burned out of that really quick. So I want to my I guess that's my long term goal. I can start my short term. I want to get up to the two hundred followers. Right, I had a number drop from the whole Twitch bot thing, and it hurt a little bit. So I felt like when I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna grind to two hundred, it'll be a good time, and like that dropped. It really kind of like oof. I did a really big bad job of this myself when I did the same thing, but I guess there's something like I don't like a smart goal. Like a smart goal is I it it stands for something. Don't I don't don't ask me what it stands for, but it's like an actionable goal that you can work on yourself. Yeah. Um, that doesn't rely on anybody or anything. Like of course, what I said was I was like, oh yeah, I just wanna make tons of money and have tons of follows and stuff. But I think setting goals that are um, you based, as I said. <laughs> Like, um, 200 follows would be nice, you know, but like, yeah. what's one piece of content that you would really like to do? You don't have to make this, you don't have to make this your goal right now either. Of course, I'm not going to be like, Hey cat, it's two months later and I haven't seen your new science spectacular Saturday yeah. with blowing so, shit up. So that, that would be, you know, one of my big goals is to work on science Saturday, at least once a month, bring out like actual experiments to do on stream again. Um, because you know, we did like the oobleck and stuff, and I feel like that went really well. Minus spilling it all over myself. Um, oobleck is wicked and, cool. And you know when I when I've done like little like mini lectures and people have been interested, but I feel like I could do better. So I just want to, you know, 
work on that and maybe just do it like one Saturday a month. We do a big sciencey experiment thing and we talk. About and then you can like put the time into it that you want and make it really cool. Yeah, I feel like it was getting too rushed because whenever you, I mean, even with a pod, podcast, you have to have some sort of preparation. If you're unprepared, it can go a little awry. And it took me. When you're talking, when you're took me 15 about, hours worth of time, like actual no. time. To just set yeah. up all the stuff for my very first podcast. Yeah, like, and, I mean, it just sucks. You know, Science Saturday is like you a new thing every week, and it's not just like it's like math and equations and concepts and theories. So it was a little, it was getting a little much. So I wanna, I wanna do that better. That's my, that's that's my short and long term goal is to make that a a thing. <laughs> I think that'd be wicked cool. Yeah, as I said earlier, it's definitely a different kind of content that I feel like. I'm sure there are other streams out there that do experiments and stuff from time to time, but I don't feel like there's a whole bunch of sciencey stuff out there, especially not from people that I know. Yeah, I think um, it's good, you know. And I really want it to be educational. I really want people to be like, I know so many people like you, gross math, you know, me too, me too, but. It's so nice because, you know, I've done outreach in high school and elementary school, middle school and the K through 12 um, and other college kids. And just it's nice when you can. Ex- it's such a satisfying feeling when everybody who talks about it, you know, you kind of teach someone how something works, either like, you know, a little bit or a lot of it. And it's just a real good feeling all around. <laughs> you know, you have kids, you know. <laughs> They learn stuff. You're like, cool. they, they learn stuff. They do Sometimes stuff. they learn the wrong stuff. Oh. So what is the biggest you ever would want to be? You said like a part time streamer. So, like, oh, man. what would the, like, oh, you know, I know some people who are like, listen, I would like 30 people, steady chat, or some sort of goal. What is the biggest yeah. that you want to see? the biggest i want to see like um there's a streamer i watch that just got like um partner partner yeah and he has a hundred people consistently watch him around a hundred just around and um he he has drops right he has like in the beginning of a stream there's like 80 at the end of the stream there's like 80 and then in the middle there's like you know, those 20 to 30 extra people sometimes it's 150 you know somebody really gets up there so like something like that like around there like i would i don't know how comfortable i would feel like um you know, i see people like a, a k would be a lot like a thousand people watching you would be so much that i feel like i wouldn't be able to interact with people i like yeah. talking to the chat and stuff and so you know, we wouldn't be able to sit there and talk and then be like, let's play Among Us with the people who play Among Us with us. Like that would Yeah, because there'd be just so many people. It'd be like, it'd okay, be well, and then even with like 30 people, it can be hard for stuff like that to be like, well, what's a fair way to play Among Us? Yeah, and like there, there's a streamer that I think uh, Emmy and I, I guess Andy, you know, um, that I, I feel like I kind of went away from their stream a lot because they were really community based, but then it got to the point they were popular that I feel like they just like their community based stuff like plummeted immediately. It was not as it was not a like super point. community based, and then the moment you hit the mark that you're looking for, just kind of yeah. like okay, almost- cool, thanks for all the community help, and now I'm just gonna do my own thing. Yeah, and you know I don't, I won't, and they're not like super super big, but you no. know if you're gonna do that stuff, you gotta you know work up to it and i'd want to that's so you know like partner and you know whatever the criteria for that like a little more would be great but i think i would i would flop i think if i got super big i I wouldn't like it i wouldn't like not being able you know i'd be like subscriber only chat you know i don't like that type of stuff (laughs) i can't even do follow only like i've I've rated random people and been like seen follow only and then i'm just like yeah never mind i'm sorry i rated this person because i just feel like who are i mean it doesn't matter how big you are and this is just my opinion don't get me wrong and i know some people have their reasons or whatever but i feel like i i get in that situation and and my thought is just like who are you 
Like, I know. who do no. you think you are? And it's who never like, it's never like, you know, the the shrouds of the world that I'm thinking of. It's like people who are like our size, my size, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm just like, dude, like. I can't with you. Never mind. I apologize to my community. That you couldn't even say hi without following. Like, what kind of shit is that? Like, um, I don't. I don't know if it's been you, but I've I've also been on raids where it's like a follow only, and I've seen people in chat follow say follow, follow. say hi, unfollow, and leave, and then they like unf- and then they'll immediately unfollow. And they'll say like something like, uh, follow only, like. Uh, slash face. I guess you don't want raids unfollowing. <laughs> I've never done that. I usually just leave without yeah. being an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but honestly, if somebody did that, I'd just be like, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of get it. Evaluate your life if someone says that to you. <laughs> yeah, because like that's not how you. Um. So like I have a few random people that I know on Twitch because of like raids and stuff, and. You know, so I have I have a shoot game, I have shoot shoot my shoot gets game people, and um, some like story mode people that story games that we play people that I've raided, and I don't think I would have been really a part of their community or like I've gotten raided by those people as well if it was just like follow only. Like so, like if I ever get to that point, that's too much for me. That's <laughs> If you're take, talking politics or playing highly spoilable games, but if you're doing it just to rack up follows, yeah, and like a very good point. Money. But I guess like even then, like it doesn't stop somebody from following you to just be an asshole about your political views and then leave. Yeah. Which is one of the. I mean, I don't know how anybody else feels. How do you feel about this? I personally think, like for the most part, like politics and religion. Just as far as my Twitch stream go. No. Oh yeah, I I have a ton of um. There's a streamer fellow who's really good about that stuff. Who's he's pretty good. Like, hey, it's like let's move on. Like let's not talk about that. And there's always a line, right, with yeah. any type of those conversations on the internet and whether or not you know someone is. You can get to a point, and if you're like butting heads too much, you know, like what's there's the only so far you can go in any of those topics. Yeah. There is. And Before somebody gets mad. It's not going to go for it if you're not, like, actually having a conversation. Yeah, and it, it no becomes point. destructive, and then it doesn't even become about whatever it was about, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so I think a lot of people avoid it because, like, I can't imagine. Do people do that? Do people go, show me your weird political opinions, and then they'll, like, loop around, like... A lot of them have, like, the same argument. I don't know. That just doesn't seem like good content to me to sit here and be like... I happen to know that there are some people on Twitch that are political streamers. Uh, The one I can think of right now is, like, some girl who does, like, political talks. And it was, like, this big thing. And she would, like... (laughs) She would sit there in the middle of her discussion with people because she had like a podcast or something. I've seen it on YouTube and she would just be like, and I even made a joke one time about this because I just had to. It's like, nobody's followed or subscribed and like, since we've started today, like, what are you doing? This free content you're getting, this free. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, but Kira Church is right. Like, there is, um, there's a, there's a time and place in like, someone else's twitch chat is not it (laughs) really even sometimes on like discords and stuff like i remember in the elections like people were like woohoo and i was just like okay guys well just how about we talk about video games again yeah uh, a lot of discords i was in around the time had like here's your had made a a text chat was like all political post garbage memes gets dumped into here if it's anywhere else it's pretty good idea that's pretty good idea i was not smart enough for that i was just like i was the after fact guy like okay guys i low-key agree with some of you but like but then the thing is is that anything like that there's two sides of it and then you gotta i don't know yeah and then um like i think like it was like if there's any sort of anything bad like you're gonna get kicked like we'll kick you until everything's over then you can come back like there are like rules to it just because some people can't behave which is fair i'm sometimes one of those people i've gotten mad about um i was in a discord and someone said that 
my religion that I have or that I believe in is not like valid and it shouldn't exist and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and I didn't say anything for the longest time. And then I like sat on it and I just like, I just simmered, right? Until I like boil over. And I was like, I should not have done that in Discord chat. I should not have put this person on blast for being a jerk. I should have just let them be a jerk and DM them hateful words instead. So, no, nah, I'm kidding about the hateful words. <laughs> what is the biggest Twitch controversy that caught your attention or impacted you in some way? So, I think, so I, I've said this a little bit. So when I was getting into streaming, um, a thing that another female streamer who would say is we need we need another I need another female streamer in my group that's not like a twitch uh twitch thought right that was the the term for it and um because things were getting really out of hand with like people were like showing their boobs on accident and it was like like you would look at the clips and they were very much so on purpose and like Alinity abusing her cat on stream and not getting banned was something that was really crazy for me. It was just like this whole like streaming in a hot tub meta happening. <laughs> like I, I talked doing... about that like a week and a half ago on stream and I was just like I was like I didn't mean to even get it bring it up, but I was just like Yeah, like there's just so many things that I think that like it's really weird. You know, I you know, if I do that, like if I, <laughs> there's a difference, like I could show off my boobs on stream, you know, I could do that if I really want to, but like purposely doing nip slips and not getting in trouble for it is whack. That's so crazy for me. And, the, and, and people, these people are popular. They're partners. They're, yeah. they're up there. Thousands of views and they do it and nothing, not even a slap on the wrist. I so, guess um that works into another conversation then about do you think that larger streamers tend to be out of touch with the whether you want to call it like the massive streamers like obviously compared to us are they a little bit out of touch sometimes it i think um some i think some of them i think some of them are i follow like one really big streamer and you know, when I was talking about the issue of like not really being able to connect to your crowd once you get to a certain point because there's too many people, you got to keep that in mind, right? Like they try their best. Like streamers who try their best to like really, you know, we're a community and we're having a good time, even though there's, you know, 10,000 of you and people who are just like full of themselves on camera. Um, and I think that there are more people who are just full of themselves on camera who are really big. Um, then there are people who, who try their best to still hold on to some sort of community interaction and value while streaming. I think there's a decent yeah. amount of people who do like the, so there's, there's multiple different kinds of tip videos and then the people who give different various kinds. I think a lot of the tips that some of them will give are kind of where like, Oh man, like sometimes it's just like, yeah, you know, the only thing you got to do to succeed is you got to diversify and make a YouTube. And then there's somebody who is like has a day job and kids who is just sitting there with a TikTok, a YouTube, and a Twitter, just putting their whole day into it. And they're just like, why can't I get more than two views? Because I feel like, you know, yeah, it's obvious if you have like a thousand views, you make a YouTube, you're probably going to do decent on YouTube. But not everybody is going to be able to grow on there and do stuff like that. It's not just that easy. It's, yeah, like, I I can't remember who did it, but there was a guy who was streaming. He was, like, doing a just chatting stream, and he's like, people nowadays on Twitch are declining in content. Some people will just watch other people's Twitch streams and comment on them. And he goes to this notorious, like, these people are bad content creators because all they do is watch videos of other people streaming. Like, they watch other people's streams on stream. And he does that, and, like, they are watching his stream, and so it just, you know, like, loops through the, <laughs> the content. <laughs> and it's so funny because, I mean, he was just, like, you know, proving a point. And I, I agree with that, like, 
you know, if you're going to do something, you know, do something like this, do it just chatting with other people, do questions, do a little, little podcast action, something other than just like Serena has a redemption that's watching vines like in the middle of, you know, waiting for something. That's fine. Yeah. That's a lot different than making a whole stream. Out of just watching somebody else's stream. <laughs> yeah. Just the react yeah. content meta is strong with this one. Yeah, it's just like yeah, the re the react like the react YouTube videos make sense because you can yeah like, because it's like it's a it's, you, you go in and you know what's gonna happen and but like three hours worth of a stream or whatever that's just doing that. I wouldn't mind like I think like uh, like the like try not to laugh videos I think would probably be like a fun Twitch thing. Oh, that would be funny if if you're gonna do something like I th I think part of the problem with a lot of that is like. For me, like, I used to have, like, a share a YouTube video thing, and the whole part was funny, and Emmy shared just a hilarious one. But the thing is, is then you get, like, oh, well, what are the rules and copyright and blah, 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 and then that easily gets messy, and then you could very accidentally... And it's kind of unfortunate that even something like that, like, watching a two-minute YouTube video, it's like, well, I gotta worry about this because I don't know... I mean, I feel like it's obvious, like, if I were to just play a YouTube video right now for the both of us... It's pretty obvious that it's for, it's not to watch the YouTube video on stream, and everybody's just going to be watching on, on on the stream on the podcast. But yeah, you know, it's it's that's weird. That's that's probably uh, is this is this coming from the controversy conversation still? Or did we ask a new question? Oh, it's just kind of <laughs> controversy conversation. Yeah. I don't think I asked the question at all. Okay. I think I was uh, just can, spitballing just back and forth. Sure we, we weren't like. Going You're like, are you on another topic, though? You seem to be moving fast. You need to chill the fuck out, dude. That's me. That's me. That's what I do. I'm like, oh, you, your thing reminds me of something in the back of my head that I've been thinking about. So me, you know. But yeah, that that's kind of the 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 content of creation. I think for some of those big streamers, um, really make them out of touch. There we go. So. If you could go back to when you started streaming and you could give yourself one, maybe two pieces of advice, because I know it can be hard to do one, just but one big piece of advice, what would it be? Um, you, I, I felt really reserved, like, in, I don't know, embarrassed isn't the right word. I should have posted to like my friends and family more. I should have plugged myself because those are the people who are just gonna, you know, leave you up for like those you're gonna get followers from them, you know, like to your real life friends. I think those are the type of people. And I've seen streamers who do that who just do really, really well in the beginning and then they grow from there, where it's kind of like really hard to grow from just knowing strangers. So I think, you know. You know, I said I went on my Facebook and I and I posted it and I kind of talked to some few people. I should have done that like right off the bat to really like boost my my channel a little bit more. I mean, I I can understand the trepidation though because I'll be the first one to admit that as far as my friends and family go, none of them come to my stream. I actually got affiliated off of like my coworkers at work. And like, well, that's what I mean. If your coworkers or something, you know, if you're close with your coworkers at work, stuff. I mean, like they that. helped me get affiliated, and then they all left. Yeah. <laughs> I like they don't even have. I mean, it's fine. Like, I'm not mad at it. I think there was a weird thing where they all started to want to stream. Like, I was just like, "This is my idea. Hey guys, you should come by the stream. You know, check it out. I'm trying to do this thing." And then they were just like, "I could do that too." And then you get into mm -hmm. the whole like. I posted, I posted on Facebook, like, hey, I'm streaming, I'm at this, you know, I think, I think it was after I hit affiliate, like, I just hit affiliate, come check out my stream, I do this, this, and this. The next day, someone posted, hey, I just started streaming today, it'd be nice if everybody could come and help me reach affiliate and stuff like that the next day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's kind of exactly what happened, and then, I mean, perfectly honest, in my situation, it ended up being, like, a like, I could probably put money on it that if I checked, one of them would be online. And I know it's one of those things where they're just like, hey, Zell, you don't come by my stream or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't ever say hi to me ever. And I feel like you're just being a dick, too. Yeah. You know, it's like streaming isn't 
your own original idea. Oh and no, not at all. And, and I don't, I don't, like, um, I don't have any issue with um anybody I know who wants to stream. And I always tell people whether it's on Twitch or people that I know in person, if they like bring it up, I'm like, listen, if you, you know, yeah. want to talk about anything, if you want tips, whatever my tips are worth. Yeah. Just just um, let me know. I'll tell you I'm an open book. I don't have any trade secrets that are here that I'm going to hide from everybody and not tell anybody. I think like my other my other piece of advice would be um we talked about this a little earlier. If you are not feeling if you're like part of a group and you're not feeling the vibes, um that's okay. You know, it's okay to be like It's know, okay. It's okay to not get along with everybody or it's okay to not want to yeah, it's it's okay to you know be a part of a group and then feel like it's not really working just not there you. anymore and move on. Um, and you know I've had a bad experience with that. I've had a good experience with that. <laughs> You're good, right? A neutral, like oh, you know, I'm just not a part of that community anymore, right? You know, nobody says anything. And I've been one where I'm like, oh, I'm not a part of that community and everything, and people are kind of mad about it. Um, but it's fine. I don't I don't know. It was it's a weird situation, but I would say that like that was probably one of the better things I've done because it led me to, I guess, making friends like uh, Serena, Jesse, and Alex and I all like stay up super late chatting a lot over Dead by Daylight. And I don't think that would have happened if I wouldn't have like left the group. I don't know who these people you're talking about are. Serena and Jesse? (laughs) (laughs) Super late. We all all hang out together. Uh, so that that would be my other piece of advice is to um you know it's okay to be like "Mm, nah and move on like that i would recommend doing that if you are like "Mm," just you know find other people to hang out with i mean (laughs) i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to agree with that i feel like especially doesn't know (laughs) i don't know who alex is at all who is this alex alex you ask no, um, I definitely have had that, like, different communities that, you know, you go in with the best of intentions, and then you like somebody, and you hang out, and you're just, like, cool, and then, like, hopefully there haven't been too many just bad experiences, because I've had one or two just really negative experiences that I was just like, okay, well, I see how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just, uh, I, what did we talk about people who are a bit full of themselves, and I think when you are trying to be a streamer, and you're wanting, because you have to build, you have to build a community on Twitch, that's, you know, that's part of streaming, right? One way or another, you yeah. Have, you, have, you kind of have to do that, you know, you have your own emos, you have your kind of, like, your brand, and so, like, some people can be really... Um, some people can, I feel like for me, at least in my opinion, can do it wrong. And it really rubs, rubs other people the wrong way. Who is Alex? Um, I don't know. Which Alex? (laughs) I ask myself this all the time. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) would you consider video games a big part of Twitch then? I don't know why I put it, I worded it like that, but would you consider your video games an integral part of Twitch, I guess? Yeah, I think that's kind of what video games on Twitch will never not happen. You know, this is kind of a, this is like a break from gaming, you yeah. know, but it goes back to gaming. And I think it'll come down to, you know, if you like, like, I like watching people play games. You know, that's why I'm into Twitch. That's why I like YouTube. Uh, video game stuff and uh, yeah I think that'll that'll never fade right? I mean I think for me know. that's it's even a little bit hard sometimes so like I want to do the podcast and the best time first off the only time I have to do it is when I'm streaming but then it's like I got to take the break from games and then when do I do that when's the best time like even right now like I'm literally sitting here like is Friday a better time is Sunday a better time should I ask people should I do whatever the fuck I want well, I would say you can just do whatever you want. Honestly, I think you 
like it's good to have but like if you're between sunday and friday and you just one week works better on sunday than a friday like it doesn't matter too much like you we know that you're gonna do sunday or friday you know it's not like ooh, which roulette random wheel of the week day is it gonna be you know and you have a pretty good like oh this week we're doing this so you know i mean i try to keep because especially in the past my schedule used to change and i know your schedule has been changing a decent amount because life stuff comes up work comes up school family stuff like that so like it's it's um i try to keep everybody updated as much as possible what's happening and with the podcast too like you know, I approached you like two weeks ago. I'm like, hey, you want to do this? And I want to schedule it ahead of time. And then I can talk it up and we can know that the luckiest cat's coming on. And then we get to play Among Us in a little bit. Yeah, like it's, yeah, I, I think that um, it's fine. Like if if you, like I have, this, I have a schedule, you know, I have like, oh, someday you know, I have like, I'll play shoot games these days. I'll play story games these days, but if I don't want to play a shoot game on a day that I have as a designated shoot game day, I'm not going to play a shoot game. I'm not. It's not going to be a fun stream for anybody that way, you know? And as long as, you know, it, that doesn't happen too regularly and you can try, but I feel like it's more important to enjoy what I'm doing, at least right now where I'm at on Twitch. Um, and people go be like, hey, we're just playing this game tonight. So, like... I had the schedule where I was like, we play this, this, and then I just basically was like, these are the times I stream, <laughs> and I've stuck to that. I think I think that's the, if you can do that, that'll that'll help just to begin yeah. with, just having times to stream. I know that's something I struggle with the most is I'm gonna stream now, and then it's just like, hey, by the way, uh, I know I had a podcast scheduled tonight, but um, I got a 20 page paper that I'm in the middle of doing, and I really can't stop. Hey, it's Ken. Thanks for the raid, Kev. Um, what do you have coming up in your streams that I should be excited about? That we should be excited about? Um, you know, something that I'm really excited about is that I've been messing with my channel points a lot, and I think something you know, I had some out there, and I took one away because it wasn't. It was like okay. Um, is that something that I like is I promoted that I'm lead garbage uh, I have an anime suggestion and I have a better setup for switching over to like my desktop capture and I've done backgrounds I have a little my BRB screen so I feel like just things run a little smoother I have little sound alerts for my redemptions that I love but if you if you want to come over and talk about anime like it's it's great I, it's the vine kid that says don't fuck with me over the power of god and on my side and he screams really loud and it's the scene from from daylight's high school boys where the guy shaves off his nipple uh you know it's a good time <laughs> i think i think the first day i was in there after the anime suggestion thing was in i was like doing homework or something and i was like i want it i want to hit it i want to hear what she has to say to me but yeah, I can't do it because I have to, like, not focus on the stream. I have to go do my homework, especially running towards the end here. Like, grad- like you- I think we're actually, if you didn't get messed up because of COVID, I think you would have actually graduated before me. We're almost at the exactly the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not super, like, concerned about school. I'm taking my time. It's hard classes, you know. I know they're hard classes, so it's not really, like, weighing down on me too much. I'm not that type of person to be like, Ooh. I mean, I am, and it is weighing down on me, but not like a lot. <laughs> the moment I found out that my my class, so we're doing like a simulation thing that's like accounting and marketing and stuff. And the moment I found out I had a 20 page paper, I was just like, this is the worst feeling that I've ever had in my I mean, life. And I just. There's like a little bit of it, but it's, you know, kind of whatever. But yeah, the, the anime redemption is something like I'm excited about. And. I think every every time someone's done it, it's gone pretty well. Definitely so. gonna have to do that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The requirement is is that you know you can't. I mean, I, I've thought I'm like, would I let someone be like, I've never, I don't like anime. Give me something I could watch. And I've thought about like, how would I react to that and stuff. It hasn't come across yet because in the description it says like, give me the last anime you watched or something that you really like, and I go based off of that. I use my weeb knowledge to you know, provide useful information. 
So. You you are the first person that gets to do this because I had Joey on last week, and Joey's not streaming currently. He's on a hiatus. I want you to sell your stream to me. Why should I go to stream? Why should everybody go to your stream? I want to hear in your words why a cat stream. I want to hear it. I'm funny. I'm funny. Come on, guys. So this is something that I uh, I feel like um, I'm not very eccentric, which I feel like a lot of streamers are very dramatic. Um, I'm very level-headed, believe it or not, and it takes a lot for me to get like wound up. And so I was playing a spook sneak um, game. I was playing Metroid. Met metro oh my god metro because it was free on epic games and uh i had a lot of people in and so many people were you know obsessed with my lethargic attitude of this super sneak game and then um blasting my way like you can sneak or you can kill everybody and as soon as i got caught i just killed everybody um that type of gameplay uh even when i even when i've played like dead by daylight and stuff i'm a pretty level-headed person uh, but sometimes I will slam my head on my desk because I'm really bad at Apex. So it's, it's I feel like a nice, calm, usually vibe on my stream. And I'm pretty funny. I think I'm pretty funny. I'm cute. The opposite. The opposite of a Zell stream. First off, yeah. not cute. Second off, rather eccentric. <laughs> if you don't like what's yeah. going on here, you should definitely go <laughs> hang out with Kat. Because that way, hang out with yeah. Kat over there because she is not Zell. So but I like rage quit Metro, but, right? So it was like a very subtle rage quit. It basically was like, I'm done with the stream. And people were like, you get to play it again. I'm like, I'm mad. I'm still mad at that game. So I have to calm down. Uh, yeah, I think that, I don't know, I enjoy it. I don't, like, Zell, you're, Zell's a pretty loud person, not like in a bad way. It's a good, like, you have the energy. truth. The true feelings come out on the podcast for real. Zell, you're just loud. You're 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 too much, man. You need to chill the fuck out, dude. I feel like it, it takes it takes a lot for me to to get there, but I think you get good, genuine reactions that way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm an okay shoot shoot gamer too. I feel like I'm okay. I feel like I'm pretty middle ground. Like sometimes I have good, like real good games, and you're like, Phew. but yeah. So are you ready to yes. do the unmasking, cat? I know it's the moment you've yes. been waiting for this whole time. I think so. I've always been making sure I want to do it right. <laughs> you want to do it right? I'm gonna do it right. All right. I feel like it's right. right. All right. Don't worry, it's not gonna be. There we go. We got the mask up. Let me know when you want me to take it off for you, cat. The luckiest cat guys here. Alright, you can, you can do it. It's all, it's all blown up, too. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I put you full screen, front and center. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexis. I'm, I'm 23. I recently got into streaming, and I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm getting my undergrad in physics, and it sucks. It's taken a long time to get where I am, and it, it's, been, it's been rough. I have some I have some arm issues that makes it hard to play games, and that's kind of weighing on me as well. Um, but I love video games so much, and I love talking to people so much as well that combining the two on Twitch really just kind of rocked it for me. And yeah, I don't know. Is there any, what else do I say? That's it. That's all I got. Hi, hello. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> do not feel pressured to. <laughs> have acid reflux and i burp really loud that's a selling point for my stream though that's not really like the streamers unmasked it's majestic i am told it is majestic well thank you so much for coming on the podcast um I it was an awesome time and you were an awesome wonderful guest i feel like this was a really really great episode and i can't wait to share it with even more people um we're gonna do among us right i am gonna keep your 